about what their opponents have. They're all ready. Let's head on down for the finals. Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Indianapolis. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Kenji Agashira, and we're all set for finals action where we've got a bit of David versus Goliath down in the feature match area. We have a team literally full of Hall of Famers. All three of them yes. are in the Hall of Fame. Ben Stark, Eric Froelich, Paula Vitor, Dama Rosa. Also some of the best players that we've seen, you know, in, in this sort of latest era of the Pro Tour. On the other side of the table... Jin Yufei, Peter Ye, and Ziru Zhou, much younger, 26, 22, and 17 years old, respectively for these. And, uh, well, they're going to have their hands full playing against three Hall of Famers in a team draft format where they haven't team drafted before. Yeah, big props to them, though. They have ran this weekend incre incredibly well, played well, and uh, shows here as, well, like you said, they're playing against three Hall of Famers, Marshall. Yeah, I'm super impressed by the way these guys have played. And it looks like um, Jin Yufei maybe, maybe, maybe needing some lands here as he puts a Dire Fleet Hoarder, even though he could cast it next mm -hmm. turn, into his graveyard. I mean, it just doesn't seem very relevant when your opponent already had a 3-3 on the battlefield. Now, mm -hmm. nice thing is that Ixali's Diviner with the 1-1 counter did stop all of PV's creatures. And in fact, it still stops the Thrashing Brontodon. He did find a forest for the turn as well, so let's see if he can press this time. And there's... An Araska Frillback for uh, for Jin Yufei, and that's also going to stem the bleeding, keep him at 18 life, and prevent any good attacks here from Paulo Vitor Domitorosa, who just passes the turn back. A good position here for both players, I think. I mean, they've at least developed out their board. P people are drawing some cards. They have creatures aplenty, but... Uh, yeah, we've certainly got a fair fight on our hands right. here at the least. Might be one of those games where it comes down to what timely removal spell somebody could have for a, a larger threat. All right, there's a larger threat. Overgrown Armasaur from Paulo Vitor Domitorosa, a 4-4. Four four. Yeah, but, I mean... <laughs> Just trades off, doesn't it? Yeah. Looks like another copy of Dusk Legion Zealot in hand there for Jin Yufei. So he is able to keep on churning through that library. Looks like he's doing a little math here. He yeah. might want to attack. Interesting. Seems unlikely. Seems like the Araska Frillback wants to keep the uh, Overgrown Armasaur back on defense for now. Okay, well, he's just going to kick things off with another Dusk Legion Zealot, see what he hits, and then make his decision from there. Always good to draw some cards first. Yeah, it lets you build out your board a little bit. Sure, they're just 1-1s, one but uh, those are vampires. Sometimes that's relevant. No land drop here, though, for Jin Yufei. Paul is going to have the City's Blessing here with any extra permanent, even just a land, which would allow the Sky Marcher Asper to start attacking in, though, which, oh, well, I mean, that's a clock, right? Yeah, it's something. Spikes Hill Ceratops, and this is just a straight-up trade. Now, he played the permanent pre-combat to give the Aspirant flying, but now Faye knows that he can just throw the 4-2 in front of the 4-4 to get a pretty clean trade, even though a 1-1 is left behind. Yeah. He asks if he's got the City's Blessing, and uh, Apollo says, I do, I do. So let's see if Jin Yufei... Wants to make that trade. I mean, he can't just take hits from it. Maybe he has another answer in mind. Right. But, uh, and chumping is not really a good thing versus the overgrown armor store when it can just enrage and make some sapling tokens here. So yeah, It's a little too much value. I mean, even as it stands, Paul is already benefiting from this trade. Yeah, but you are trading your three drop for their five. Mm-hmm. 
just wonder if, if the name of the game is going to be tempo in that way here. It looks like it's just going to be who has the most powerful stuff on the board. And right now, that's Paulo Vitor Domitorosa. All right, it looks like Faye picked up that Thundering Spine back that we saw during the draft. I think I see it in his hand here. Oh, and he's getting on the offensive. Reaver Ambush take caring that, uh, taking care of that Thrashing Brontodon. Good target. Yeah. At least getting on the defensive, <laughs> not having to take hits sure. from these things going forward. What was that, a hunt a week? Yeah. Okay. It's going to make the Diviner a 2-5, which can block the spike cell tailed Ceratops by itself. Yeah. And it takes care of the flyer, so this a nice little clean good. move. Yeah, this looks pretty good here. Uh, Jin Yufei able to continually keep the board stable and prevent himself from taking too much damage. And a, a fine turn here for Paulo Vitor, but again, nothing too impressive, and he's out of cards. Yeah. You know what? If Faye resolves that Thundering Spine back in his hand, if he hits a land for the turn, that's going to just start taking over the game. That is a fantastic le late, ga late game plan. Well, well. <laughs> he's going to have to wait till next turn, though this is actually pretty good. The Orozco Relic, he's going to want to use it next turn for the thunder Thundering Spineback if he doesn't find a land, but he can cash that thing in for three life and a card later. Oh, and look at this. Journey to Eternity. Okay. He played it, <laughs> he played it on one of the uh, Dusk Legion Zealots. That's some value yeah. there for Jin Fei. I like the way he thinks. He says, look, you're green-white. You got all these big ground pounders. If you're going to kill me at some point, I'm going to get to block with this thing. I'm going to get it back. I'm going to transform it, and I'm going to go off. Yeah, this disincentivizes PV from attacking. And, you know, he doesn't want to use a Luminous Bonds or, like, a Pious Interdiction on that uh, Dusk Legion Zealot. Is it, it's just so... I mean, it seems so bad, right? But now that Thundering Spineback has hit the battlefield, Faye is just going to take over this game. He can just pass every single turn. He can cash in the Relic if he wants to draw a card and gain some life. And producing 4-4 Tramplers is no small feat. I really like how Jin Fei has played this game. Uh, it looked a little sketchy there in the middle, but he sort of calmly moved his board position forward. Has taken out the key threats, or at least nullified them through blocking on the ground. And now he's set up to take over with his late game bomb here, the Thundering Spineback. Oh yeah, he's really just putting it on PV to, to make a move, to find a way to get in the, in the air or, you know, remove the big creature. But every turn that he just passes back is another turn that Faye pulls further and further ahead. Now all he has to do is just keep tapping his mana to make these yep. dinosaurs turn after turn. Yeah, start attacking. Why not? Why not? They're basically expendable, and uh, at the moment, Paulo, his best blocks equal trades. Yep. Like, there's a Dusk Charger sitting in Faye's hand, but there's nah. no reason to play it. He can just make free 4-4s. Four Got to make hay while the sun's shining, Kenji, and uh, that's exactly what Jin is going to do here. He's in great position to take a first game against the Hall of Famer. And there's another dinosaur. Looking through Paulo's deck, seeing what he might have. And once again, Faye's just going to jam in there. And Paulo really needs to find some answer. Okay, so it looks like he has a strength of the pack in his deck, as well as three Squire's Devotions. Paulo does? Mm-hmm. So if Paulo's able to build out maybe a little bit bigger of a board and find his strength of the pack, he might... Well, even at this point now, it might be too late, actually. He's fallen down to eight already. Well, th if he does find a strength of the pack now, that would actually give him reasonable blocks, though, right? He'd sure. Have a six six, another six six. But that's just stemming the bleeding until oh, yeah. Faye produces more creatures. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's not in good shape no matter what. Could buy him a lot of time though. It was a hunt the week there that uh, Faye showed with his uh, wayfinder. Yeah, and honestly, this all started because Faye hit the plus one plus one count on that Exali's diviner, stopping all of the seriously early threats from PV. He could have been a very low life total at this point where Paulo could have had other lines of play open to him to really apply pressure and try to race the Thundering Spine back. But as it stands, he's still at a comfortable 14, and Paulo just has had no way to interact. Yeah. Now, if he, is to, if he killed the Thundering Spine back right now, he could actually stabilize. Remember, those would go back down to 3-3s. Three sure, but then Faye can just start attacking with the 1-1 one -one Dusk Legion Zealot 
and you know <laughs> clock him for eight turns. I yeah, like well, it. I mean that's that's a play because if at any point Paulo kills the Dusk Legion, then he's going to transform the journey to eternity, yeah. and he can get back his sp uh, thundering spine, spine back, back again. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, this does change the math here, though. The Famished Paladin just picked up Squire's Devotion. And that makes those attacks from the 4-4s a lot worse. Okay, yeah. It's a 5-5 five five now with Lifelink. Well, now we're in that position where if A just sits back, produces more dinosaurs, it, eventually he'll find a removal spell potentially or a combat trick to deal with the Famished Paladin. I mean, we know he's drawing a Hunt the Week for the turn as well, so... That's right. He may just do it right now. Yeah, he's just going to do Dust Charger... That's going to make it a 6-6, six, six, and it's plenty big enough to eat the Famished Paladin. Yeah, Apollo is going to gain that 5 life, though, as mm -hmm. both creatures fight each other. And most importantly, Faye opted to fight with the Dusk Charger instead of his Thundering Spine back, just in case, you know, a combat trick or something could, could blow him out with a pump in response. Now, once again, we see these dinosaurs that can start attacking, and Faye even doing a little more math. I like it. He's getting in with that Dusk Legion Zealot. Yeah, I think he realizes that the attacks on the... Crackback from Paulo Vitor Dama Rosa did not look enticing. Well, until and he's going to start blasting in there with his one one. So this is the this is probably the moment that PV needs to draw that strength of the pack to really make something tick. And he doesn't draw it, oh, so yep. he's just going to scoop him up. Paulo Vitor Dama Rosa loses to Jin Yufei here in in game number one. And look at this, Peter Ye has Ooh. also picked up his game number one, and all of a sudden. <laughs> well, the youngsters, at least by comparison, <laughs> are up. Game, game. Yeah, we saw Eric draft that mm. uh, red-white, potentially splashing black uh, deck for Profane Procession. Peter, I know Maria, and uh, Jake got to watch him draft. They said, yeah, I think he had five Grasping Scoundrels, Marshall? Something like that? Six. Six? Oh, I'm sorry. A lot. Sixteen. Well, maybe not that many, but... All right, six. Take a look at his deck real quick. What if he only had two and he was just making up stories? Um, I think you're making up stories at this point. It was a hypothetical, Kenji. Okay, fair enough. Players are just getting shuffled yep. up here. Yeah, I had a chance to chat with, uh, with Peter's team... And he said, look, if my opponent misses their third land drop, we're in great shape. <laughs> okay, he got a game plan at least. Oh, okay. maybe it's Zhu that has the f the six Grasping Scoundrels here. Yeah, Peter it is Peter looks Zhu. like he has a, a Merfolk deck, so. It is Zhu. And as you can see, he's got one of them on the battlefield down there. Or I should say in the graveyard. <laughs> but he does look like he's still able to get the aggression going in the mirror match with Ben Stark. It looks like he's a little bit ahead on life, but behind on board. And it looks like it's Ben's turn, so he's deciding how he wants to start attacking. Now, that brute can't block anyway, Ooh. so he may as well get in. And that's a champion of Dusk for Ben Stark. That's a little bit scary, as Ben will fall down to five after that use. So it's not going to take much for you to find some damage to push through. Especially c scary with the Pirate's Cutlass and that Menace creature on the battlefield. All right, doing some mental math in his head here. Any kind of combat trick here could make it very problematic for Ben Stark. It is not going to take much. How many lands do you run in a deck with six, seven, one drops? Probably 15. That's what I was thinking as well. I, and I don't really like to, to push it too far on the lower land count, but... So as we come in here, by the way, uh, our graphic isn't fully updated. <laughs> there we go. Zero Zhu is the oh. game. So that team actually took down all three wow. game ones from the Hall of Famers. And Zhu had a hijack to take the champion of Dusk on this turn, Marshall. Is this going to give him the win? Now, he's not dead on board as 
Ben's creatures can just block the larger four power creatures and you would only get in for two damage with the Menace Goblin Trailblazer, but a removal spell wins it here, say Mutiny. Or he could have a Lightning Strike or something. Okay, so he just makes the obvious blocks. This will be a trade on the Scoundrel as it only has two toughness. The Cutlass doesn't prevent it from... It's a chump on the champion, but he's right. going to get that card back. But Ben Stark's going to fall to a very precarious three life. Oh, wait. I think that's a Ruin Raider, Marshall. Is that a... Oh, you're right. It totally looks like a Grasping Scoundrel to me, but I, no. I, I think I'm wrong. No, no, I think no, that no. was a Ruin Raider you're this entire right. time. It is a Ruin Raider, and that means that it will survive, except for that he moved it. That's smart, though, because he doesn't want to take the life loss from the end of turn trigger. And so because the creature already had two damage on it, he can move the Cutlass, and the damage will kill it. Wow, that is really clever. Oh, but that's game for Ben Stark. He's got Buccaneer's Bravado. That's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Plenty enough. With Zero Zhu at only nine life. That is game number two going to Ben Stark. He tried to steal it from him, but Ben stole it right back. Buccaneer's Bravado, one of the more explosive cards in the set. Plus one, plus one, and double strike if your creature's a pirate for one and a red at instant speed. If it's not a pirate, he gets plus one, plus one, and first strike. Okay, our middle table, already over. Wow. We didn't even get a chance to go there. Peter Ye wins two games to zero. So far, Ben Stark is the only player from the Hall of Fame team able to take a game off of our newcomers. All right, we'll see if Faye can, well, close it out if he wins here. Wow. That's the tournament. Xin Yu Fei, with the fate of his team on his shoulders, they are looking to topple the giants of the game, and they are perilously close to doing so. Okay, Faye off to a slower start here. PV getting in for one at that Sky Marcher. This would be a monumental upset. <laughs> I mean, these guys hadn't even team drafted before they made the, the top four. <laughs> Impressive. Like, do you know how many times Eric Froelich has done a team draft in his life? Hundreds of times. Thousands, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing with Ben Stark. He's probably done the most out of anybody here. <laughs> so Moment of Craving there took care of the Tashana's Wayfinder with the uh, Explore trigger on the stack. Apollo yeah. opting to bin that Famished Paladin yeah, from uh, the Explore. Another uh, Tashana's Wayfinder, though, here on the other side of the table for Jin Yufei. And he's deciding if he wants to keep... Vampire Revenant on top of the library or put it in the graveyard. And he's going to go ahead and keep okay. it, signifying he's got another land in hand. Also, maybe that he has some kind of trick or removal because the 1-1 one -one from PV could just block and trade with it on the surface of things. So. Yeah, Dustborn Sky Marcher is pretty annoying in the face right. of a 4-mana 3-1 flyer. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a heck of a comeback if this team is going to make it. In the meantime, he's going to play a Sanguine Glorifier. Pretty even game here so far. We'll see what Faye can do here. He might just run out that Vampire Revenant that we saw him put on top. I mean, now it looks like a more reasonable trade sure. against the Sky mm -hmm. Marcher just because it's the two power. Oh. This is pretty good, too, but he has an option, because if he kills the Flyer, then his Vampire Revenant is that much better. And you know what? The Tishan's Wayfinder is going to become a 4-4 here, so it already stops the Sanguine Glorifier. I mean, the question is, does he want to start attacking? Right. <laughs> and it looks like he's going to go for the more aggressive line here. Yeah, so Hunt the Weak is going to kill the Sanguine Glorifier, put it in the bin, and let him attack for 4 damage right now against just a 2-2 yep. Flyer. So a good aggressive play here from Jin Yufei. Domita Rosa trying to pick up a game win against him just to keep their dreams alive of winning this GP.
What does he have? I saw Squire's Devotion in his hand. There it is. Squire's Devotion, though, you know, it's a nice attack mm -hmm. here, but Xin Yu Fei, of course, has that Vampire Revenant in his hand, and that will trade. Yeah, this the puts the race Sky Marcher. much favorably in Paulo's, Paulo's situation. And, yeah. you know, it doesn't take much to to deal with a 3-1 flyer That's anyway. So. That's a good point. He, he could have any type of removal to kill it. Like if Faze Beth's out is just blocking with a 3-1, that could be very, very problematic. Okay, well, you know what? We're going to have to actually switch off of this game down to Ben Stark versus Yuruju because right now... Oh, my Whoa, gosh. look at this. Yuruju has what looks like lethal... Although Ben has two creatures, so perhaps he can survive for another turn. Life total's three to nine here, and the you can see the power of the, aggro. The, the three Grasping Scoundrels have apparently done a ton of work. Ruin Raider drawing extra cards for Zhu. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if most of the damage Zhu has taken is from his own Ruin Raider. Oh, sure. What a great deck for Ruin Raider, by the way. Oh, yeah. All the one drops in there. He can use them right away. They don't hurt him too badly. This is a huge attack for Zhu. He's trying to knock off Ben Stark. And see if he can't lock this thing up. Stark is going to trade for the Ruin Raider, eat one of the scoundrels. What does he have? Buccaneer's Bravado here. Is that enough? Well, on the surface of things... It looks like Ben Stark was already dead on board to this attack. Unless right, hey, look at the Okay, pillows. there we go. That, that makes much more sense. Okay. All right, good. So we actually have a game going here. Right. And Zero Zhu is being very aggressive. At those life totals, he is just jamming, trying to get as much damage through as he can before Ben Stark can get his feet under him. Yeah, and so what happened there was the Bravado was actually used on the Scoundrel being blocked by the 3-3. Three, three. Just to keep it alive. Correct, and, and eat the 3-3. Three, three. Keep the other one, yeah. Ooh, uh, but that's a really annoying one here right. for Zero Zhu. That is a Needle Tooth, needle tooth Raptor. It represents a two for one. He's still going to take four damage. <laughs> it did not <laughs> slow Zhu down at all. He snapped off attacking with all creatures, plays another Scoundrel. So that's a really good play if he didn't have a way to deal with it immediately. He wants to keep con uh, the pressure going, and if he knows he's going to get two for one anyways, he might as well keep, press uh, keep getting damage in while he can do that. Like, he still has two creatures to Ben Stark's zero, although Ben Stark has untapped for the turn, but I think that was a really good play, knowing when to turn on. I liked our decision to like let both players gain 13 life also. I thought that made this <laughs> a lot more exciting. <laughs> good call, Kenji. He wrote it on a piece of paper for me, but first I thought it was a bad idea. Ben, do you have anything that can help stabilize here? He's got to be able to beat two two ones. Okay, Champion of Dusk. Oh, man. That's a little bit risky. He's going to fall down to five. Is there a hijack? Just a land there for Zhu. Zhu, Zhu with the hijack would just win the GP. Unfriendly fire, sure strike. I mean, there are oh, a lot of... Oh, he passes the turn back. Ben may have stabilized. Okay, and... Ben has a ton of spells left in his hand. I think I think I saw a fanatical firebrand, which can yeah, he does. He can play it and leave it there. Yes, to threaten one of the X ones. That bricks almost all the combat right. tricks that Zero Zhu could have. Is uh, Ben going to start attacking? I, it, it definitely looks like. Oh, that might be a moan of craving in his hand too. All right, Champion okay. of Dusk is in the red zone. Oh, Heartless Pillage. Heartless Pillage. It, only a Swamp left in hand. Zero Zhu is completely out of gas. And look wow. at that follow-up play for Stark. He still has a card left in his hand as well. And Zero Zhu is going to need to find some action. And quickly. He's top-decking. And if there's one thing that these decks do not do well, it's top-deck. He figures, well, I can just trade here. Okay, well, it looks like we need to go back up to table A here. Xin Yu Fei versus Paulo Vitor Domino Rosa. Because I guess there's some action. Ooh, Ruin Raider, a nice one there. Uh-oh, this one could be out of okay. hand here for Jin Yu Fake. Can Paulo Vitor Domitorosa find a win, or is he going to lose here? Because if he does, the Grand Prix is over, and that's, that's going to do, do it. it. Wow, they Holy complete moly. the upset. Jin Yu Fei, Peter Ye, and Zero Zhu defeat the triple Hall of Fame team. Congratulations, 
What an absurd accomplishment. I know it's just one draft, but what a finish for that team. Congratulations to them. That's going to do it for the finals here from GP Indy. And welcome back to the booth here at Grand Prix Indianapolis. That's Ken <laughs> Diego Sierra. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. And we just had a super exciting finish down in the feature match area. Massive upset here at GP Indianapolis. That, I mean, honestly, walking into the building, th there's really, for me, two teams that jump out as that upper crust tier. And it was the team that just lost and the Peach Garden, yep. right? Like, if, if you told me, okay, you get one of these teams, I'm happy, right? Either one. I can flip a coin. I'm like, hey, I know these guys are going to bring their best game, and they're some of the most experienced, best players right. in the world. That team that just won was not on that list, and they just knocked off one of the upper-tier teams, and it is an incredibly impressive achievement for them to take Congratulations to them. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, they had dominated this whole entire yes. time. Remember mm -hmm. that, right? Like, Paulo Vitor Dominarosa, Ben Stark, and Eric Froelich, they had yet to lose a match that they played. Now, their record will show losses. That's where they did uh, an intentional scoop. Yep to their opponent, they didn't actually lose a single round that they sat down and shuffled up cards for until now. So a really impressive stuff for, for Peter Ye and uh, Jin uh, Yufei and Zero Zhu. I mean, honestly, th that is a... Th I can't imagine what they were thinking sitting down. I mean... They don't team draft. They looked very composed the whole time, too. Absolutely. I went over and asked them about it, and they were joking around with me. <laughs> I'm like, what did you go? He goes, do you know this card? And, and he showed me the scoundrel. And I'm like, yeah, I know that one. He's like, I've got six of them. <laughs> He's like, so if they miss their third lad drop, I'm good to no go. No problem. All right, it sounds like we have Peter Ye down in the feature match area. Peter, congratulations. I've got Kenji Egashiro with me. Wow. You guys just knocked off one of the best teams in the whole entire world. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Marshall. I I can't imagine what, what must have been going through your head when you guys sat down to do a team draft against those uh, those grizzled, grizzled veterans of the game. What were you thinking? Yeah, well, I suppose there was not a whole lot going on because we were all very tired by then. So <laughs> we kind of just uh, we kind of went along with the motions. Now, what about the uh, what was it six? Grasping Scound scoundrels. Grasping scoundrels. Uh, yeah, that was in uh, Joe's race deck. That yeah. So, so mm -hmm. did you uh, approve of this build, or, or uh, were yeah. you skeptical? Yeah, I think it was fine. I think uh, our plan was to have our opponent miss the third land draft, <laughs> and then uh, we might get there. So what was the plan going into the draft? Then was was the black red pirates deck with a ton of one drops something that you were looking for, or no, not really. We didn't actually really talk about it because uh, we don't. We have very minimal team team draft experience, so right. uh, we we're just. Like, we just sort of, uh, well, not really gave up, but uh, we, we didn't really cram for it at all. We just, like, went in. Wow, I am so impressed by you guys. You, you remained composed, you kept it together, and you kind of smashed them in the oh, finals. Absolutely. Peter, congratulations. Make sure you tell your teammates congratulations from Kenji and I and everybody else watching at home as well. A massive upset, and you guys really earned it. Congrats. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Kenji, unbelievable stuff from that team. Ooh. I... I'm still just in shock. I, I mean, it, it was. A, it looked pretty bad, it right? It was a savage beating. Yes. It was a savage it beating. It was just like that. I mean, we were getting told, hey, hey, you better go over to the other right. table because they might beat them on that table. And we're like, no, no, <laughs> let's go over here because they're winning on that one too. Like they were winning uh, so fast we couldn't keep up. And that was with them being up a match from the very beginning. So, wow, once again, I got to say, just a huge upset here. And congratulations to Peter Ye, to Jin Yu Fei, and uh, to Ziri Zhu. I, I am blown away that they were able to take down one of the best teams we have in the mm -hmm. field. So that is going to do it, though, for Sunday Night Magic here from GP Indianapolis. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you coming along and watching Team Limited here from Rivals of Ixalan. Really fun stuff. Yeah. We got to see those bombs in action, uh, something that you know you and I were going, wow, there's a lot of bombs in this set. Well, it turns out they make for pretty exciting commentary because they can swing a game that looked like it was Absolutely. over back. And we had a lot of fun uh, watching some of the best archetypes go at it in Team Sealed and, of course, Team Draft here. We want to thank everybody that helped make this tournament possible. That's the judges, staff, Team Channel Fireball events, everything here on Sunday. And of course, we want to thank you for coming along. We really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us. We're going to see you next weekend. We have live coverage from Grand Prix London. Now that is also limited. So for those of you draft hounds out there, it is not team though. It's individual. You're going to see uh, t uh, sealed on day one and draft on day two. So thank you so much for joining us. From Maria Bartholdi, for Jacob Van Lunen, Ken Jagashera, Marshall Cyclops saying we'll see you next week.